And this is part three of my interview with Helmut Reiser. The problem we have uh, is that our societies um, uh, makes it taboo on aggression. A hundred percent. So even, even what happens, what happens, they people compensate. One compensates with eating, <laughs> the other uh, compensates, uh, compensates with blue. Huh? Mm -hmm. So if you if you block one drive, yeah, uh, then um, there comes a reaction. See, our brain has three levels: basic, middle, up. Up is intelligence. Middle is emotions: hunger, love, flight, aggression. Basic is what your body needs what you have no influence mm -hmm. yeah this is blood pressure this is saliva this is uh, sweat yeah all the in intestinum and all this so the problem is the hierarchy is from the bottom to the top and the top the intelligence of the of this you don't reach if there are emotions mm -hmm. and this is a, this is nowadays uh, this this um, devil's work uh, that they go with emotion, with fear, to the people. Fear for Corona. Fear for this. Fear oh, for that. Yeah? We gotta edit this and, out. We and, gotta edit uh, this out. Yeah, and and uh, this is uh, psychological fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't reach the intelligence of the people. Some yes, but mostly uh, the hierarchy is from the bottom to the top. It's the same with the smokers. But you know why they don't reach the intelligence with the people? Because yeah. the people don't go through nothing anymore in their life to achieve thinking. What happens to the people? People adapt. They make blue. Mm -hmm. And the people who have the, uh, the power, they are all the same. They want to have power. They want to have power on the people. And they, of course, they want money and everything for themselves. Uh, but uh, there are so few who still serve the population yeah they try to rule them and uh, this works in our whole europe more or less the france people are much much more uh, <laughs> uh, intelligent and uh, uh, not so obedient the terrible are the german yeah <laughs> they are so obedient if there is a uh, if there is someone up there yeah mm -hmm. And this can be Adolf Hitler, this can be Honecker, this can be Merkel. Uh, they are all obedient and they listen what they do and they do this shit. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what shit they, they say. Yeah? People do it. And you get pressure if you don't do it. And this uh, makes the mentality of the people and what you just described, that they go there like this. Yeah? They have no emotions anymore. Mm. Yeah? And this is the most important thing if you train dogs. You must be authentic. You must be uh, authentic with your positive emotions and with your negative emotions. Mm -hmm. And this with a good timing. Without losing the brain. Mm -hmm. So, and if you can switch very quick between uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, yeah, yeah. it makes it easy for the dog. Yes, 100%. Yeah? Black and white. Yeah? And that's so, no gray. And this is, yeah, this is easy. The beginning, you start with positive reinforcement, plan A, always at once reinforcement. Then you go to plan B, intermittent reinforcement, which is Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Hope, 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 hope. <laughs> yeah? I never thought and, about it like that, but and that's then, amazing. And then you go to plan C. Mm -hmm. The dog knows the words, knows your body language, yeah? because, because you trained this before. And now you have to be disciplined and just play heaven, hell. Mm -hmm. If you do, heaven. Huh? We are in harmony, we work together. And the next exercise is a positive reinforcement for the first exercise. And then you do ex next exercise, next exercise, next exercise, and the dog says, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, like a child. Yeah? And when he makes mistakes, you say, hell. Mm -hmm. yeah? With a voice or with mechanical influence or electric influence. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is, with a good timing, absolutely understandable for the dog. Mm -hmm. And he likes to be uh, in a clear order. Yeah? He's done for this in a pack. Yeah? 
And this is his natural life, to have an authority in front and uh, has a good function in the pack, and then he's happy and healthy. You see, all my dogs mm -hmm. became 10, 15, 14 years without any veterinarian, also some vaccinations. Mm -hmm. yeah? And they are healthy up uh, because uh, they have stress when they are two years before they understand me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but afterwards, they are happy because um, we understand each other. People, people tell me the same thing. I take the dog from them. I give them uh, nice in the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. relationship, and then I set boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then the same dog that they own, when they see the dog, the dog is more into me. Of course. But I've set boundaries. Yes. Boundaries on both sides. We can have fun and we can, yeah. but you have to listen. And, and then this they're is what confused. the dog wants. Uh, exactly. But people are confused because then the dog goes back like they see the owner and the, they don't care about the owner because there's no boundaries, you there's, see, no, there's the, no leader. This blue of the dog mm -hmm. is a genetic thing. yeah. And this blue is looking for a hierarchy. Women too, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Women too. Different, di diff different story. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. Di different talents. <laughs> like in dogs. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, selection of a good talent is the most important thing. <laughs> yes. okay. okay, but um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Not women, dogs. <laughs> and the discipline uh, and, and the. And, yes. And they are looking. Uh, and they learn from the alpha. Yes. Yeah. And they love the alpha. So you believe in alpha? Be absolutely. People be say be it doesn't exist because because uh, it's, that's normal in a pack. People, there is a, there's an alpha and there's an omega. People say there's no alpha in um, in a in, pack in, of, in of dogs. Wolves, in wolves and dogs. Uh, well, this is new science. It changed a little bit the uh, um, the, um, the the knowledge they have. Uh, sometimes in some cases uh, it's a female, sometimes it's a male, in some cases it's different uh, authority, but uh, in the pack there is an alpha and there's an omega. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the omega is clever uh, enough to do always submissive behavior or has a good stay life. Alive, to yeah, stay alive. Has a good life. Mm -hmm. yeah? And uh, the normal pack member loves the leader and learns from the leader. And he learns never from the omega. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is what a dog is looking for. And if he doesn't find an alpha... Then he has to be the alpha. He goes to the alpha. Yes. Yeah? And sometimes and, he's not, yeah. and he's this, not cut this, out for that job. And this causes, of course, problems if you have a dog with good drives and strong nerves. Yeah? And you have a, a handler who uh, tries to be the... <laughs> omega, the, the the bitch of the of, of the dog. <laughs> yeah, the omega. Yeah, and that's why you have problems because the dog is yeah. making decisions. Of course, based on yeah. he, the mama is nervous. Mm -hmm. Let's say mm -hmm. somebody's approaching. Mm -hmm. Dog thinks he's has no choice. He's mm -hmm. the pack leader. He has to make a make the choice, and then yeah. whap, and then the mom doesn't know why. Yeah, you know. Well, you have to lead the dog. You know, we bring these dogs into our world. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We, you know, we bring them into our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's our responsibility to make sure that they behave in our world. Mm -hmm. So if you know you have a, a dog who is protective by nature, mm -hmm. then you need to control his environment mm -hmm. because he's living in our world. Mm -hmm. If not, go live in the forest with the dog, you know. And I tell people this and they're confused. It's like, but he's, you know, he was nice as a puppy or he was this, he was that. Yeah, but you're not taking charge, so he has to make... And some dogs are not made to be leaders. So they're acting out of fear. Mm -hmm. Then you have fear. This is just a bunch of... I don't know, we're going, we're getting carried away here. But yeah, um, yeah I understand completely um, this. And I see a lot of... This is what's going on. A lot of dogs are becoming fearful and they have no management at home. And then a lot of dogs are coming to me that people are going to put down because they can't handle the dog. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I ended up with Dutch Shepherds. Because the dog said, oh, he can't be fixed. This dog can't be trained. This dog is too crazy. Mm -hmm. Five days at my house, mm -hmm. the dog is fine. Yeah, yeah. A year later, I'm competing with this dog. Mm -hmm. I never wanted a, a, a shepherd. I never wanted you know, and then I, but I understand them. I see how they, their, what, what their problems are, what makes them tick. What is the problem? They needed discipline. Yeah. Most of the time, that's all it is. With love, in the beginning, you know, some, 
you know, balance. You need always um, 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 a time to teach the dog how to deal with corrections. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go too hard in it, the dog doesn't understand. He has good nerves and good character. He says, not with me. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one like that at but, home right now. Yeah, yeah. For my, my world champion, Fitch, you saw there in my house, uh, uh, Texodermit. And uh, when he was 18 months old, the owner called me, Helmut, I have a very good dog, but I want to separate. Can you take the dog? Uh, because I'm fearful. When he came here, yeah, um, I let him run in my, my backyard. Yeah. Bernd, my son comes, oh, a dog, and the dog, rah, standing yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. I said, hey, hey, this is not gambling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have never an argue with this dog. If I would would try to to uh, discipline him at once, yeah, um, you're going to fight. Uh, he would fight with me. Yeah, he never fought, fought with me because uh, I t taught him something where he can be successful, and then I came in very lightly uh, with compulsions. Yeah, and when he understands how to deal with the correction, yeah, then he accepts this, and then you can. Put more, put more quantity in it. <laughs> and, uh, but first he has to learn the quality of the correction and uh, how to deal with this. Yeah? And this is something when I talk about, uh, do my seminars, um, I have this pressing model. And this says three legs of a table makes always a stable table. Mm -hmm. So you need three forces to stabilize the behavior. If you want this behavior, yeah, the first is you need the drive that the dog wants to do something, which is often the green, the mm -hmm. motivation to, to get the prey or food or something like this. Yeah, Of course, with this motivation, he doesn't make this exercise. He makes technical shit, mm -hmm. his drive aim. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you need a force, the leash, yeah, to manipulate or the hands, uh, or the legs or something to manipulate the dog into this behavior and when he's there you say release drive aim this is plan a he learns how to do this yeah and what and he learns on which command uh, can be body language can be acoustic so then of course um, you can teach plan b stay longer in this exercise and wait for your reward and then you get your reward but then comes plan C, you have to do. Yes. Yeah. And the trick nowadays to get this dog in, in, in the limit of his nerves is just you make a classical conditioning that you have to do, spike collar, electric collar, uh, and um, you connect this with the drive. Mm -hmm. And then the dog goes banana. Huh? And uh, he knows uh, when he puts all energy in, uh, then he will get the release. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this is how we train dog. Mm -hmm. Do you bring uh, you bring the motivation into the work and then you put softly a little, a little more, a little more. But remember, after tight comes broke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah? yes, yes. So you not too much. Too much yeah? Yeah? And this is, much. A, this is a sensitivity a dog handler must have. Yeah? It must be fair. Never ask something the dog cannot do. Yeah? And uh, be, be sensitive with the compulsion that the dog puts this in the work and uh, does not go this way. Kill me. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah? Or hyperactivity and and bites and, and get, goes crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, the trick is always go very lightly, start very lightly with a compulsion, teach the dog how to deal this, fo this force mm -hmm. with this force, mm -hmm. connect this with the drive, and then the dog, is what I said to you in the beginning, the compulsion is the secret of the training. Uh, if you hit the point, the dog brings in all the energy. If you do too much, you have either the hyperactivity, mm -hmm. which becomes dangerous, or technical shit, you lose points, <laughs> yeah? or you uh, overload the dog and he goes to blue, to avoidance, mm -hmm. and then the drive is gone. Then you're and this is exactly uh, what we uh, 
created in our club. We have this training method in the RSV2000. We put these all in colors. We have a good methodic didactic and, which is most important, we have a judge sheet. Every judge has to use this sheet and he has to give three answers. What about the drive? What about the technique? And what about the coordination? Yeah, And then you have um, judging, which is better than everything I've ever seen in the world. Yeah, Because world champion don't fall from heaven. And everybody starts with the young dog here and climbs up to higher results. And uh, so you start with drive. And if the dog has in the first trial much drive but technical problems, yeah, you say, okay, this is SG, this is SG, but the drive is special, is excellent. And then he gets an excellent for this job. If you are on a higher world championship, and he has V, V, S, G, he gets an S, G. So we have a, a judging system who respects uh, the training in this way that drive, technique, coordination are the three parameters uh, what the work um, has to show. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you can equilibrate and you can win Nowadays, when you see last week uh, the World Championship, oh. <laughs> hey, I told this, I said this in the judge meeting in uh, Vienna uh, from the FCI. I said, hey, how stupid do we do? Do we deal with our dog sport? Uh, have you ever heard that um, McDonald's says, well, you can eat our hamburger? but they don't taste so good. And we go there and the best handlers of the world are not able to do an excellent. They're too stupid to train a dog. Huh? And the best handlers just can do an SG. Or there are 100 of the best handlers and they fail and they have good and satisfactory. <laughs> I said, this is a marketing. This is so stupid. Yeah, This is uh, like... You mean the standards are too high? Uh, the judging is, is totally crazy. Oh, okay. They don't, they don't understand that drive and technique is an antagonism. Yes. Yeah? I agree. I agree 100%. Absolutely. If the dog wants to make the drive, you get no points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're, Without trying to, you're trying to balance everything as best in so the... They think mm -hmm. you can have optimum drive and optimum technique. Uh, maximum drive and maximum technique. And this is something which you will never have. Always, if you have more conflict, you have more drive. Yes. And if you have perfect technique, no, then uh, you have no conflict. You have less drive. Mm -hmm. So you only can reach optimum. And this optimum can be this, this, or this. Mm -hmm. And everything is optimum. Yeah? And uh, when the dog is here, they say 95 points. No, this is 100 points because it, <laughs> you cannot show it better. Yeah. Yeah? And, and when in the last 10 years, nobody can show this better. Then you know that there's no better. Uh, well, then, maybe. Then you know uh, the value is wrong. Yeah, And this is so stupid. Since years, we make a marketing for our dog sport, which destroys the dog sport. Yeah, This is so stupid. When we started with our judging, they laughed. Oh, they get so many points um, uh, at your... I say, hey, you're stupid. You... Um, what is Castrian uh, of English? Yeah. What is this? If you... Cut the balls? Yes, what is this? Neuter? Or? Neuter. You neuter. <laughs> you neuter yourself. You neuter yourself because... No, don't neuter me. I'm not no, ready no, yet. No, in, 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 uh, as a judge. As a judge. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, if you have the space up to 100, mm. yeah, you can, much, can describe much more difference. If you have only a space between 94 and 80, yeah, there is nothing true. Mm -hmm. Everything is there. Yeah? 
And if you open up to 100 points, you have much more space mm -hmm. uh, for judging. And uh, I don't know why people don't understand this. And there, there comes a sport in it uh, that everyone wants to show, oh, I see everything, I understand everything, I know everything. Hey, they understand nothing. They're too stupid to understand that world champions don't fall from heaven. And they are too stupid to understand that maximum drive and maximum technique is impossible because drive comes out of conflict. The more conflict, the more drive. They say, this is happiness. And the dog is <laughs> in the healing. This is no happiness. This is limit. This is limit of drive and limit of nerves. Yeah? And um, so if you have more conflict, technique is shit. If you have less conflict, uh, technique is better, but drive is less. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> these are the rules. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And of course, if you have a powerful dog, it has more. Yeah? And if you have a dog who has less, it has less. But uh, if the best of the best, and we have very, very good handlers nowadays, mm -hmm. and we have very, very good dogs, yeah? they are not able to do an excellent in a world championship. <laughs> this is a stupid the marketing. This is like McDonald's says, uh, well, we can eat the hamburgers, but taste they don't taste. Yeah? And I was, I was yelling on the meeting of this. I say, hey, we don't need loser. We need heroes to support the sport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everybody was <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah? But uh, this year is the same again, again when I see the uh, obedience judging from, uh, um, from Frank Phillips. Huh? Should I edit this part out? <laughs> no, you can, you can send this. Uh, uh, Frank is a friend of mine. Oh. But he is uh, also influenced uh, by the modern style of judging, which destroys the dog sport. Everybody of these people who stand there shall do something for the dog sport, shall motivate for the dog sport, shall create heroes and not losers. Mm -hmm. yeah? This is, makes me so sorry. I, I fight for uh, 50 years for this sport and, and uh, to, to bring the truth in the sport, mm. yeah? not lying about uh, compulsion, not lying about electric yeah. collar, not lying about spike yeah, collar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? But um, you see, the training we do, I can show on the TV at 8 p.m. in the evening, yeah? if it's not the correction training. Mm -hmm. yeah? You know this, if the dog is treated wrong, yeah? you have to overload the wrong influence. Yeah? You can do this with drive, but mostly you have to do this with compulsion mm -hmm. yeah? because the dog needs discipline. And uh, I'm not talking about this correction. Uh, and what you see, these negative things uh, you see in the media and so, this is something uh, where someone tries to help someone uh, to correct the dog. Yes. And, and this then looks they not take, nice. And then they take it and they run away with it. This, but it looks not nice. Sometimes you see a see, dog... What, what do we do with the people in the society? We give them pills. We, we <laughs> give them pills, we put them in jail, yeah, yeah, and we uh, take them away. Yeah. So, also in our society, we have not ethic and morale and everything is nice and happy. Huh? One million years. Look for your maximum personal comfort. And this is with many people, not ethic and moral. This is hunger, flight, love and aggression. For me, for me, for me, for me, for me. Therefore, also this whole social uh, work does not work. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because uh, we, have, <laughs> we have this in our society. Uh, we are so social. Huh? And now see what, what is there in the Poland border? <laughs> oh, in Belarus? See. I didn't see. You don't see this? This, this guy makes a hybrid uh, war and uh, he pays back uh, in this way that he puts all these uh, Flüchtlinge, these people who wants to come to Germany, on the border to Poland and say, here, to Germany, to Germany. Oh, <laughs> Germany. yeah. <I> <laughs> yeah? And, uh, and they show uh, that our show social thinking and social system creates problems to us. But politicals, yeah, okay, forget it. Change a yeah, and they and they make uh, they make the rules for our dog training. 
Have you ever been interested in any other breeds? Go ahead. My first dog was a Doberman. And, um, oh, that wasn't the litter that you had. No, this was a Doberman where I started. You got this. it, yes. Yeah? Yeah. And I always said if I could get a Doberman with shepherd qualities, I would like this Doberman again. But not nowadays with his ears and his tail, it looks terrible. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't like this. And uh, then I had shepherds. This um, uh, combined to the club where I came here to Göttingen. And then I had a area of 10, 15, 20 years, no healthy shepherd. This is my problem. With a German with, shepherd. With a Spain, with a elbow, with a uh, uh, with the skin, and um, so it was a time where I get rid of shepherds, and um, then I had no dog. No, no, that was, was wrong. Yeah, I had no dog. And then a friend of mine came and said, there is a 18 months old dog, he's very good, and look at this, you must have a dog, because he wants to train with me. So I took this dog, but I was get rid of shepherds, and then I bought a Malinois. Mm. Yeah? And this was funny. Uh, I liked this dog, uh, but it was stress. Yeah. When you go with this dog, you go, <laughs> always going, always going. So I trained this dog um, for four years. And um, between, I made with my Falco the Bundesliga in SV. But here in this area test, uh, I beat with my Malinois, my Bundesliga, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the odds group test. Mm -hmm. So I said, I will go to... Uh, the German Championship of the Malis, and I went to a seminar, took this Mali in the, in the car. After two days, I went to the helper for the Championship of the Malis, and I said, can you test my dog if he's strong enough? This dog was totally empty. Two years, two days in the car, only all this, yeah? So he was totally empty. Mm -hmm. So I could not go with this dog uh, to a trial, because uh, he goes out of nerves, mm -hmm. and uh, so this was also not not your dog, uh, not my dog, no. And then I had realized uh, that I shall look for healthiness in the dogs, mm -hmm. and I knew the bloodlines. And since this time, this was fifteen years now, more. Uh, I have always healthy dogs with good drives, with good nerves. Of course, here and there a little bit different talent, but um, it's something you can you can look at. Yeah. Okay. When I realized that the strongest dog often are so strong because they develop their drives by their internal conflicts. Yeah. So if you have here a problem, mm -hmm. yeah, it's no problem with two years. But then suddenly you get older, your bone are not so uh, soft, become mm -hmm. stronger. Mm -hmm. And when the nerves go mm -hmm. out of the spine mm -hmm. over the sandpaper, in the beginning it's a little. And the dog learns to overcome the conflict with the drive. And the more problems the dog ha has, the more conflict he has. And then he learns to handle more and more and more and more conflict by the drive. And so I realized at this time uh, that especially many dogs who are so good quit very quick with Cauda Equina. With, at first with five years, then with three years. Later, uh, at the end, uh, when they went in this breeding, uh, because the dogs are so good in drive, uh, already with two years, they quit mm -hmm. by healthiness. Yeah? And then by the inbreeding of these dogs, uh, you lose uh, fitness and you get the skin problems and all these allergic shit and so. So nowadays, um, uh, we, especially in RSV 2000, we think different. Yeah? We don't make clear, uh, close inbreeding and um, except me, 
<laughs> shit happened. By accident? When, when, no, yes. <laughs> when I was in Spain for judging the championship um, one, two years ago, one and a half years ago, my employee looked for my dogs and she said, um, how long can I let the female with the male together? The male was the son. Mm. I said, hey, up to the seventh day, it's no problem. Yeah, But I didn't know that she let the dog the whole afternoon alone in the backyard. Mm. And when I came back and Inlay became thicker and thicker, I said, hey, you fed her too much. <laughs> I, don't, I gave her less and she became fatter and fatter. <laughs> I realized pregnant. this female is pregnant, but I didn't know. Is this a 15 months old male or is this an eight months old male? <laughs> Did you find out? Yeah, it was this one. Okay. <laughs> it was this one because DNA. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have. So a it was a son to the mother. Mother son breeding. Was it a good breeding? The young female I have there. I feel like this is a good I, way. I kept, I kept one female and the whole litter is all the same. Yeah? Consistent. They are healthy. Uh, they are strong, uh, and uh, so I remember a friend in uh, Peru, Pepeluche. He is a famous breeder in horses, dogs, and a very uh, expensive falcon to, together with a, um, a Saudi Arabian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has the knowledge that he said we make only incest breeding but only over two generations. Yes, and then you bring and it And then back. we go out mm -hmm. um, uh, and take a dog from uh, England or somewhere and bring this in. And when, then again, two, two uh, generations only inbreeding, but you must make a good selection. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Did he find defects in the, as you go? Like, so you might get two perfect dogs and maybe five crappy Genetic. The, the whole litter was good. Even going the very tight? The whole litter was, was uh, seven, seven, uh, and, um, seven puppies mm -hmm. and all were very good. Yeah. So uh, I think um, by accident I learned a little bit, yeah? mm -hmm. a little bit more. Uh, but the uh, rule we have, no inbreeding uh, makes a wider genetic pool and makes more heterosis. And because of homozygity, mm -hmm. you understand what it is? Yeah. yeah? Um, the hom homozygity creates uh, the DNA, which is near pretty the same. In some way, it's good. They look the same, they act the same. But um, the production of enzymes, proteins, are very singular. Okay. And, uh, and this creates, for example, healthiness, fitness. And when you put them in a zoo with sterile situation, they're okay. Put them in the wildness, they have not the uh, various Immune options. system. The various options in, mm. in behavior, mm. in uh, immune system, in everything. Yeah? And this is why uh, inbreeding uh, makes too much homozygotic and this kills the race. And you ask which race, uh, the other races, Doberman is killed. Mm -hmm. yeah? And um, Rottweiler? Rottweiler is still white population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, but many, many. The, Dr. Wachtel from um, Austria, uh, I invited for a talk. And he said, every race which is done with this champions breeding, yeah. Champions come mm -hmm. back to breed and the, the, to make a better champion, mm -hmm. and and then the, the son becomes a better champion with a better female and champion, champion, champion. This makes homozygity, and every breeding uh, is killed after sixty years. Six and after years? sixty years. Gener sixty years. So how many generations? Lots of generations. Well, yeah. They do. Yeah. yeah. Handful of generations. Yeah. And um, he says, then you must make an outcross. Mm -hmm. To bring heterosegality into it, okay. yeah? because uh, you add also the um, problem genes. Yes, yes. Yeah? That's what I. So I was under the assumption, I've I don't know, is go tight, 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 tight until you start seeing your faults, and when you start seeing your faults, it's too late. 
<laughs> well, maybe you keep the good puppies and then you keep this one as a pure. I don't know. I, this is nobody has the answer yet. That's right. Right. That's so, right. but I, I and then you take another side and you do the same tight, mm. tight, tight, and then you have kind of your outcross. But the fact is, the uh, the problems comes only if the DNA has the problems on both strengths. Yeah. What so, if, oh, that's how it happens. Yeah. Only if it's both sides. If you have it on both sides, uh, this um, um, criteria comes out. Okay. Yeah. So if you uh, make an outcross and you have this only on one string, a problem gene, yeah, then dog is healthy. And this is why heterozygity is so important. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And this is uh, our philosophy of RSV2000. Our breeders uh, look for this. And there are not many who make this inbreeding except this mistake. Oh, they killed me in the, in the internet for this. <laughs> and oh, that is not my fault. <laughs> what shall I do? Shall I kill all the puppies or make I my new experience? Mm -hmm. And it was an interesting experience. And now with this female I, I kept, I have um, lots of, of options for um, bring okay. different genetic material mm -hmm. to her. Huh? Unfortunately, this is where my memory card got filled. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos that I've had with Helmet Riser. In my opinion, there was some insight into the past, the present, and potentially the future of dog sport. I found him very intelligent, very sharp, and very interesting, and has a good history on dogs that we might not be able to see because we weren't there before. I think we can learn a lot from what he's been through, what he's gone through, and I saw him as a stand-up guy. With the modern day internet, there's so much information out there, we don't know what's right and what's wrong. So for myself, I like to go right to the source of people that are credible, outside of the internet. I'm just very fortunate that my friends had arranged to surprise me with this interview, and thank you, David, for getting this together for me. I hope you found this interview insightful and entertaining, and I hope you realize this is the perspective of someone who's been around for a long time. Because of the communication, the German and the English, some things might have been not perfect, maybe he wasn't explaining them right because of translation, but I found him to be super intelligent and super sharp. The world is not a perfect place. We're trying to make it better as we can. So don't be a piece of shit and stay bulletproof.